In step one of this tutorial series, we discovered that the ground control sequencer from Endorphins can indeed drum and bass. In this video, we turn our attention to the more challenging aspect of music production, creating a melody. Now, I'm going to use a simple drum pattern in this one and then add a bass line and a melody. But, you know, how easy is it to do that on this little machine? Can we get enough variation and texture out of only three melodic tracks? Now, some people say the reason I love sequences so much is because I have no musical talent whatsoever. Some of those naysayers are even people I might call friends. And to that claim, I would say, ha, look at my grade five piano certificate and weep. Though actually, they're probably right. But creating a melody should be easy, right? Pick a key, pick, pick a scale, and then choose some notes. There are only seven notes to choose from in any scale. How hard can that be? Well, if it was easy, we'd all be writing chart-topping melodies every week, wouldn't we? And we're not, let's be honest. So let's get into it right now. If you stick around to the end of the video, you'll find out whether we can switch from drum and bass to answer the age-old question, can it melodic techno? Okay, so we're back with the ground control and we're gonna make some melodic techno this week. So let's load in a completely clean patch. We will go to project G and by default, it has 16 steps. It is at 120 tempo. So let's change that to 125. Yeah, let's get going. So I'm gonna create something completely from scratch. As in my last video, I am using Ableton as a sound source. So the MIDI cable is going out here. I'm not at the moment using any of these patch cables to connect to Eurorack. I'm just purely focusing on the ground control. I have some sounds loaded in, some drum sounds. I'm gonna keep it quite simple this week, just four drum sounds. Then I have three bass sounds. So for the bass line, I'm going to use these three samples. They are purely um, one note samples. And because I'm using them on the ground controls drum tracks, I cannot change the pitch. They are all at uh, C, the note of C, various pitches and different patches. And so the bass line for this track is all gonna be about rhythm and not about uh, changing melody uh, or going in line with chords. It's purely about creating some sort of groove on which we are gonna add then two or even maybe three lead sounds. I haven't quite decided yet. Okay, let's get a simple groove and bass line going. So let's start as ever with the kick drum. So we are going to do a, uh, we're gonna do deck recording again, so you hold down the recording button and then you can use the 16 pads here to set up a beat. And uh, for four on the floor, which is what we're gonna do here, each of the ones with a black sort of line around them, they are the four beats that you can easily pick out. And I'm just gonna keep this as 16 steps and I'm not gonna change the volume so this sounds like this. Okay, quite straightforward. That's a good start. The next sound, our snare. So again, we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna have a, sn a snare on the two and the four, 16 steps, so just one bar loop. Okay, so far, so good. Now, as I said, I'm not gonna make this particularly complicated. This is more about how to create the bass line and the melodies. So we have a closed hat here. This one, we are just going to use four steps actually because we're just going to have a something on uh, every every beat and it's just going to repeat so there's no need to have a, a pan longer than four steps so we have these four steps and if i don't do anything with velocity then it'll just sound robotic as i talked about in my previous video but let's add a little bit of dynamics so if you hold down you get into this step view then you press the 16th button, you are on volume. And so this is step one and the volume is 127 and you can reduce it by one or you can just pick a, a volume from here. And I think we will go down to there. And then on step two, we'll jump up a bit. Step three, we'll jump up a bit and we'll have max on step four. So at least we have a little bit of a, little bit of a groove, right? The final, sound here is the open hat. Again, this is just going to be on the upbeat on beat uh, three, which is this one, one, two, three. 
Um, and again, it's going to keep repeating. So we only need four steps for this. And I'm just going to keep it at the same level. So, I mean, nothing could be more straightforward. Maybe we should add a bit of swing as well. So if we go to, if we hold down the uh, running man and press this G button, we're at swing or shuffle 50. Let's stick it on 54. Still, you know, okay, as far as it goes. Um, fairly simple. Right, let's get into the bass. So the first bass sound I have, again, this is going to be a rolling bass. So if we go to the step uh, number again, I'm only going to have four steps. So this is just going to keep going. And we're going to put a hit on all four steps. And we're going to go to the velocity and we are on step four, which I want to be slightly lower, actually. So let's go there for step four. Oh. Step three, I want to be maximum, and then step two and step one lower. So again, we create a, a groove, a slightly different groove to the closed hats, which should sound pretty good. So we are with this so far. Yeah, nice. Now we haven't yet saved it, so we'll save it by pressing star, record, record. Right, all saved. The next one is this slightly higher note. And this one, I want to be eight steps. And we are going to have notes on uh, a few of the steps, something like that, perhaps, maybe. I think we'll keep the volume the same for this one. It's just to add a little bit of an accent, so it's a you know, higher pitched. Let's see what that sounds like. Yes, of course, so good. So you see, all I'm doing is playing with velocity, I'm playing with rhythm, I'm playing with repetition. And then the next one is a similar, well, sorry, similar idea. I want to add a different rhythm. This is a different, this is a slightly more sustained sound. If we go to the step editor, this one will have 16 steps and we will have it on something like uh, three hits. So the first beat, yeah, something like that. And I think we do need to change the velocity on this one. So if we press the velocity, so we're on the, the, last, the last hit. And this one I want to be really quite low. Um, and then that's to be the main accent. And then the first hit, probably somewhere between the two. So step five, we're at max velocity. Let's take it down to 81. And let's see what we've got now. Right, I can't hear that one particularly clearly. So this is track seven. And so if you press the tempo button and button seven. Okay, that is quite quiet. So I'm just going to go to my computer and turn up the volume of that sample. Okay, I'm back. So we have step seven, um, soloed. So when all of these are mute buttons, all of these buttons here. So when they are fully lit, as they are here, this one at the end is all the drums. This is track in the drums, drum track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then mel melodic tracks one, two, and three. So if they're fully lit, they are muted. So this one is not fully lit, which means this one is soloed. And so if we press play. Okay, it's still quite subtle, but we'll, uh, we'll go with that. So then if I press tempo and un-solo it, that's the full groove. And so any of these you can mute. So if we wanted to take out the kick drum at any point when we're performing, which I think is quite cool. Now, one thing that you can do, um, which is potentially more about performance, is that you can quantize these mutes. So if I press and hold that first one, it'll, it'll now only mute at the end of its pattern. And the pattern on the kick drum is 16 steps, so it's a full bar. So if I press it, 
you may have heard that we still got a kick drum hit after I pressed it. And then it comes in on the one again. I think that's really handy, especially with the kick, but maybe with all of them, to be honest. So if you are going to perform this, it might be worth setting these up to be all fully quantized. Okay, we have a groove, we have a drum loop, we have a bass loop, and it sounds pretty good so far. Now to the difficult bit. Now we're gonna try and create a melody. And for the melody, you then press uh, another track. So we have three melodic tracks, and I have three instances of Serum on Ableton. Uh, the first one, track one, sounds like this. You can, you can see that if you press two keys together, then you get uh, a slide between them. Track two. Has some delay and reverb on it and is a sort of growl. Maybe these buttons, by the way, uh, transpose it. So, and this is a C. So I think maybe we'll keep it at that in that register. Um, we might come back to that. Track three is a slightly sort of oriental sounding, slidey, pitchy thing, which sounds quite nice. For the, mel the melodic tracks, you can use the keyboard to pick out, to pick out a melody. You can also set a scale. So uh, it's per track. So if you go to track one and we select, um, the running man and then this last key here. Um, it'll tell us what scale we're in. And the, the lightest um, step here, which is the C, this is our root note. So we can move it up to C sharp, D, and this uh, kind of hieroglyphics here actually means minor. So if we go back, we're in C minor. And if we go to track two, we're in C minor and track three, we're in C minor. And I think that's where I would like to keep it. So what that means is if I press C, it plays C. If I press C sharp, which is not in the C minor scale, can you see that uh, the key D lights up? But it's actually the same note. So it, even though I press C sharp, it plays D. So you cannot play a note out of scale um, which is really handy. So if I press this by mistake, thinking it's the F, because it's not that clear on the keyboard, it'll actually helpfully play me an F. So the scale function is extremely helpful. Okay, let's go to track one. Right, I want this, uh, I want the steps on this to be shorter. So again, this for me is much more of a sort of rhythm track and it's probably a bit high. So I want it to sort of interplay with the bass line. Um, and these uh, four buttons here will tell you uh, exactly the time division for all of the steps. So at the moment we're on 16th, so all of these 16s, this is one bar. If I press 30 seconds, actually that's not right, because when it goes flashing, that means you're in arpeggio mode. So that's my mistake. What you need to do is you need to press the track button and then one of these. And now, even though it doesn't sound any different, each of these steps is a 30 second. So we'd need two pages of 16 steps to get one bar, that's what I want. I also want to make this longer. So I'm gonna take it all the way up to 64 steps. Bear in mind we're at 30 seconds, so that is only two bars. So I'm gonna start by recording the rhythm of notes that I want. And I'm gonna use a slightly different method to the method that we have been doing. So rather than picking out the steps on, on the grid here, I'm gonna go um, in a sort of XO, XO type. I know that I want every other note to play. So the way to get into this method of recording, which is slightly different to the way we've been doing with drums, is to press the button once, and it tells us we're on step one, and I want to press a C. Now it tells us we're on step two, and I want to rest, and a rest is the running man. So I'm just gonna keep doing this and alternating. 
until we get to the end. I had to tell us we're full. That is as long as we can go. And if I press press <laughs> if I press play. Okay. So we have the rhythm. Now I would like to change some of the notes. So I'm now going to go back into the same pattern by pressing record once on track one. So now I want to change the actual notes. So rather than pressing it once, which means I will then have to go in and I'll do the step recording that I just got wrong. If you hold this button, you can then edit it. So step one is a C. If you press the arrows button, step two is a rest. So this is then lit. Step three is a C. Step five is a C and I'm going to go up a an octave. Okay, so you basically go through the pattern that you've created and choose some different notes. And because I'm in scale mode, I can't get any of the notes wrong. So now I don't know what this sounds like, but everything at least is in the right key. Okay, it's sounding a bit more melodic techno. We'll just save the pattern before we go any further. All right, track two. I'm going to leave. I'm going to do that at the end and I'm going to try and live record something in improvising and see where we get to. I'll go to track three. The pluck. So we want track three to be 16, a 16th note, which it is. We also want it to be 64 steps again. I need to go to the notes that I want to record and then Well, I think that is something like I want. So this is going to be, uh, it's 16 steps long, but the, the pattern is 64 steps. So it plays this melody and then it has a bit of a break before it repeats again. That is what I wanted. So it starts at the first, the first bar of the pattern, then it has three bars, effectively quiet, and then it repeats. If you hold that down, you get into edit mode, and you go to volume. I think you could do with a bit of volume changing. Okay, yes, so four is my first note, great. We'll start with it at full, step five. We'll, I think we'll sort of come down. Uh, and then sort of back up, just to give it a bit of a dynamism. Okay, I think that's it. What does that sound like? Yeah, okay. So we're, we're, we're kind of getting there, right? This is it's a four bar loop, so you don't listen to it too long before it starts getting boring. We'll save it for now. Okay, so we've done two different types of recording. We have placed the notes on certain triggers with the drum tracks. We have used the melodic tracks to advance um, by one. So you pick a note, then you pick whether there's a rest, and then you pick a note, and then you kind of adjust it. Different ways of doing it. Now for track two, I'm going to go into another way of doing it. I am going to set track two to be eighth notes, and I am going to set it to have a length of 64. So one of the interesting ways of recording is you can do what's called wait record. So if I press tempo and record, it says wait here. So it's going to record as soon as I press a key, and then it will play through the rest of it. And we have 64 steps, which I think count up while we play. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to start on the root note C, and we'll see how it goes. was okay. So if you you can now see that all the notes have been recorded in and you can go in and amend some of them. 
um, or you can amend, um, you can put ratchets on some of them. Um, you can add probability. So maybe let's do that to our track. So we have a whole series of eighth notes on the second track that I've just recorded. And if we go into probability, we hold tempo here and probability, the probability on this track is zero, which means every note you play is 100% going to play. But if we add in, say, 15% probability, then some of those recorded notes won't play, which will give us a slightly different rhythm. One of the things we can do to make the pattern slightly different is we can shift the pattern. And you do that by going into pattern, uh, sorry, you hold tempo and press pattern shift here. And then we can nudge it by two or some other different type of, different number of steps. So this means we've nudged it three steps further forward. So I started on the C. The C is now gonna happen three beats in. Let's just see if we can see that. So when I press play, doesn't start on the scene. Okay, so we've managed to create uh, an eight bar loop, which doesn't repeat exactly because of the probability on track two. Um, it has some groove, it has quite a simple drum beat that we could obviously make more interesting. We've answered the question that I asked at the start, can this thing melodic techno? Um, yes, as long as you want an eight bar loop. But I guess the question is, can we take it further? Does this thing allow us to create a song? Does it allow us to create build-ups? Does it allow us to create drops? Can we do an intro and outro? Can we make a full three minute track on this machine? And I don't know the answer to that, but I'd like to find out. And if you'd like to find out, please join me in the next video because that is what I'm going to try and do. But for now, I'll leave you with our eight bar loop. So hopefully that's given you an idea how quickly and easily you can come up with a melody. The small but very usable keyboard comes in really handy. Multiple ways of recording your melody are also really helpful. Now, is it as easy as using a MIDI keyboard? Well, no, it's not, I'm afraid. But if you want the sequencer to be the heart of your system and you don't want to be carrying around a separate keyboard, then the ground control is pretty much unique. And of course, once you have recorded it and saved it, then you have the basis of a whole track right here on this little thing. And that is really quite impressive. Now, but at the moment, we just have a loop, but decent start, but hardly a whole track. Now, can we create a song out of this loop? And would you even want to? Can you jam out an arrangement on the fly? Well, in the next video, I'm going to try and test that out and use a single project to create a full track with intro, drops, breaks, and everything. And if you haven't checked out my other videos on the ground control, please check them out. I have a whole series taking you from beginner to expert. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on part three of my tutorial coming next week. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.